Hello and welcome today to the Krauss Maffei Wegmann and next to Defense Systems booth. We are at Eurosatri and we are going to see the evolution of the tank. Hello, hello, what's your name? So my name is Clément and are you specialized in tanks? Exactly, so on the Leclerc tank in particular and especially the renovated Leclerc which you can see here. Exactly. So it's already operational in the forces. So it has just been delivered especially to the army. The 501st tank regiment is the first to receive the renovated Leclerc tank. In this case, the renovation concerns 200 tanks. What do we see? It's the entire fleet. Yes, exactly. And so what we see in terms of renovation, well, it's a Leclerc renovated kit system. So uh, the first point is in terms of protection, we have belly armor, a belly armor kit. Uh, which is obviously added under the Charles Clare, which allows it to deal with threats like IEDs and mines. Next, you have the barrier in particular. I don't know if you can see it here. You see the black tube that is located on the turret at the back, the black tube, which can also jam IEDs. Uh, that's feedback, especially from the Sahel, but also from Afghanistan. This, along with the addition of the jamming kit, allows us to have a jamming system that can disrupt IEDs. You also find the remotely operated turret of 762. So, who's on the roof up there? Here on the roof. So, before on the Leclerc tank, we had a 762 on the superstructure. Yes, that's true. Someone had to stick their head out. That's exactly what made the crew member have to go outside. So, his silhouette was exposed, so to speak, facing the threat. And so, it could be improved. And so, having a remotely operated turret allows the tank commander or the turret operator to stay inside the turret and use the weapon while being protected themselves. But there are still only three people on board, still three people. The driver in the chassis, the tank commander here on my right, and the turret operator on my left. We can also see that there are new sensors. So here, after that, there's the radio contact system, which is obviously present. So that's what we call, for the Scorpion vehicles, you'll also have the Scorpion combat information system, the Scorpion combat information system, which is present in all the vehicles of the Scorpion range. And it allows you to have an advantage over the enemy on the battlefield. In terms of protection, there are guys who are reactive. Yes, you have lateral protection at the same time. Here at the front of the tank, it's mainly protection against anti-tank threats, so reactive armor on the front of the tank. And here, to put it in simple terms, a grid that is specifically designed to stop the charge. Rocket-propelled grenade or tandem, which is at the back, so you see we have protection. Also from the turret neck, which is at the back, so there you go. The Leclerc renovated, it's a kit system, I'll keep it short. The reactive brick, it will counter explode on a shell to prevent penetration. It's armor that not only absorbs but also reacts in the opposite way, with the exact width to detonate incoming missiles or RPGs. The plan was calculated. They assessed the missile size and determined it wouldn't work. What about on top now, since we see grenades being thrown down small roads? Yes, those are the Gaelics, and their usage remains unchanged. Uh, there are several types of Galax. The Galax 4, which are small anti-personnel grenades, and then the Galax 13 and Galax 7, which are smoke grenades. So you see this when you're with your tank in a position, and if there's a missile launch, you fire what we call the drabes. The defense is close range for armored vehicles, which then allows the tank to change position and, in quotes, deceive the enemy. You also have what's called the Galax 46, and the Galix 46 are small grenades that have a sound and tear gas effect, which can be used in a security type mission. There are quite a few uses for the Galix. Various. And here we can even see that the grills also protect the rear. That means that even against first person view kamikaze drones, there's protection here. Because that's the most vulnerable spot. Yes, exactly. That's right, at the rear. And we know very well that today the drone threat on the battlefield is everywhere. The threat is actually omnidirectional and multidimensional, if I may say so. So it's important to have these protective elements on the Leclerc that's being renovated, but also on various tanks at the Eurosator exhibition. What a great introduction. We'll see it right away. Oh, wow. Did you see the look on that one? That's the Leclerc evolution, right? 
Exactly, that's the Leclerc evolution, that's right, with a Leclerc chassis and then a Leclerc turret, which was the uh, turret from the enhanced main battle tank presented two years ago. What's the big new feature? The big new feature is already its crew, since in the Leclerc evolution we have four men, whereas on the Leclerc renovated, there were three. The tank commander, same position, turret operator, same position, the driver unchanged. And here, on the other hand, we have what is called the assistant tank commander, but who is also a drone operator. Why an assistant to the tank commander? Because we know that uh, in tactics there is a cognitive overload for the tank commander. The fact of adding this fourth man will actually help the tank commander to overcome, if I may say, this cognitive overload. And to have more freedom of action, that's the first new feature. Uh, another new feature is in terms of fire function. So here we have the cannon again. It's caliber, 120 mm, but it can go up to 140 mm. Uh, the key aspect of the cannon at this caliber is its interchangeability. So in 30 to 40 minutes, you can switch from 120 to 140, depending on the tactical situation. Cannons with growing calibers are designed to destroy increasingly well-protected targets. However, we also have increasingly effective shells and ammunition with explosive tungsten tips. So when we talk with some others, they tell us, no, we're actually thinking about going back down. On 105 calibers, because we save 8 tons. Switching from 120 to 105 millimeters saves 8 tons on the turret, which is significant. What makes you consider increasing the volume today, when others are thinking about maybe going down? Actually, it will all obviously depend on the situation. The enemy's tactics. That's precisely why there's an option to switch based on the tactical situation from 120 to... 140. After that, there's a Sabot round, which is the charged Sabot shell, which is a much more powerful shell than the OFL, or one Sabot shell, and which has a much greater penetrating power. But that really allows us to deal with the charred threat, which of course becomes more intense over time with the different reactive armors. And here, uh, what's also interesting besides the Escalon cannon is the fact that uh, we have an ARX-30 on the turret in the superstructure. That's really to deal with the drone threat. You know that currently, in high-intensity conflicts, the drone threat is everywhere. It's a multi-dimensional threat, and it's necessary to be able to take it into account. So the ARX-30. And also what you see at the top on the turret is the presence of remotely operated ammunition, MTO, so, on the right, you can almost see missiles on the right. So these are remotely operated munitions that are controlled, if I can say so, by this famous fourth man. That adds firing depth to the vehicle, since you know that on the renovated Leclerc, the range goes up to 4,000 meters, thanks to the armor-piercing fin-stabilized discarding Sabot round. And in addition to having the shard armor-piercing fin-stabilized discarding Sabot round here, thanks to the MTO, it allows you to have enough range to potentially target targets up to 8,000 meters, for example. Which is definitely an added value on the tactical level. And then, of course, we have the 12.7 mm coaxial, just like on the renovated Leclerc you see here, and a 7.62 mm as well. Obviously remotely operated. But no, but anyway, it's... Hilly, it's coaxial. With the case being considered, it remains unchanged on a renovated Leclerc. When you take into account the 12.7, the A12.7, it doesn't move actually, your turret moves, to put it simply. And then you have your firing sequence to carry out by selecting the A12.7 to deal with the different threats, mostly infantry or lightly armored vehicles. And the traditional Galix, uh, the Galix is something else, it's not a firing function, it's a protection function. If I'm talking about the protection function, there are several types of protection. You have indirect protection, which is related to camouflage, and direct active protection. So this is an active protection system that we find here on the Leclerc Revolution active protection, which is not on the Leclerc renovated. So actually, active protection means that uh, when you have an explosive shell targeting the tank, it allows you to destroy that munition before it reaches the vehicle. And then we have, that means we'll get to the impact in a moment, yes. But that's it, it's... The whole point of active protection, and then we have indirect active protection. Indirect active protection. It is notably characterized by the acoustic localization system that we see here, which already equips the vehicles of the Scorpion range of the French army. 
And uh, obviously, we also have the laser warning detector that we see here, whose location is present on the Leclerc, but which, uh, in this case, will actually be installed on the Leclerc Evolution. So we agree that up until now we had solid armor, then later on we had reactive armor. And now we have systems that fire at the shell or missiles coming toward us to destroy them before impact. Absolutely, reactive protection and of course additional reactive armor on the vehicle. Always more sensors, cameras, infrared cameras, radar, noise detectors. And here we can see that we have all the sensors covering 360 degrees and we don't stick our heads out anymore. And obviously automatic loading 22 shells in the automatic loader. And here, what kind of weight are we talking about? In terms of weight, we're between 58 and 63. Stuns and the Leclerc renovated with all its kits is 63 tons when we talk about the main ground combat system the future next generation tank we're developing in partnership with Germany does that foreshadow the kind of thinking we have around this future tank in fact the intermediate solutions being proposed here are a bridge to the main ground combat system you have technological building blocks that will then obviously be implemented on the main ground combat system that's important. To take current battlefield threats into account right now and to develop them as we go along. What's the deadline? If, for example, uh, someone wanted it, that person wanted to buy it. If someone wanted it, if you like, it's more like the tank of tomorrow. We're looking at 2030, and you know that the main ground combat system is a bit later, in 2040 exactly. Uh, when we talk about this evolution of the Leclerc, does that mean taking current Leclercs, the chassis, and modernizing them? Or then could we possibly restart a production line? Uh, actually, you can see that it's already on a Leclerc chassis. It's an adapted model Leclerc chassis, if I may say so. So it's entirely possible to make modifications using existing hulls. Well, the um, future of the tank is still taking shape. We're making a best of with German parts, French parts, and French sensors. There's Thales, all the partners are involved, and around that, there are also all the questions about the robotization of the battlefield. I suppose that may also be the fourth man's role. He operates aerial drones and launches remotely operated munitions. He may also send vehicles for observation, but it will all depend on what follows. Uh, on the tactical situation and the setup that is in place within the force carrying out the mission on the ground.